there's a phone sitting on the desk that perhaps looks a little old. Um, I never had the first iPhone that came out 10 years ago today. Um, it's June 29th. But I did get the iPhone 3G the next year. The, I, the original iPhone didn't really come out in the UK until October. And this one came out pretty quickly afterwards in the next June. So, um, yeah, I just thought we'd talk about the iPhone. And in fact, for something slightly different, Sean is filming this one on my iPhone. So we're actually shooting this on the iPhone 7 Plus. Give us a wave, Sean. There we go. Excellent. We could go into lots of detail about how the iPhone is the greatest mobile phone and the trends it's set. Um, there's plenty of other people producing videos that you can get interviews with people at Apple who are involved in creating it. Um, I think the, the fascinating thing for me, two things, and this is purely personal, um, it was a huge difference when it came out. Um, in 2005, I bought this. So it was a, a mobile phone and an iPad. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore. Um, if I drop it into its charging cradle, I think the battery is gone. It'll get as far as booting halfway through the instruction thing and it'll um, just die. So I bought this in 2005. It was a, an iPad and it was great in some ways. So it was a touch screen with a, a resistive so you could tap it and you could use it for making notes it would run word um, sorry yeah just a slight problem with the iphone is that the bright light is making you turn into a silhouette and uh, so you're, you're uh, yeah the atari is is flickering like nobody's but that's okay i'll just keep yeah. it as well yeah so um it worked sort of quite well um but it had a few things it was it wasn't smooth though um it would suddenly drop the 3G connection, or I don't know if it was 3G, I can't remember now. Um, and literally you'd be sitting there waiting for a phone call and your phone would completely disconnect you from the network and it never arrived. So it was annoying and things. And actually, so you, you could get devices before the iPhone that did similar features, but they just weren't as smooth. And actually, most of the time, I went back to a sort of classic Star Trek beam me up Scotty style um, Motorola pretty soon afterwards. And actually, Apple had worked with Motorola on an iTunes compatible variant of this, the Motorola Rocker, um, which was an unmitigated disaster, I think is the phrase that's best used. This is a phone that we have worked on with Motorola. So actually when this came along, it was in many ways, revolution. I think it was just the fact that it just was so easy to use the sort of touch screen, the multi-touch and so on you could get on. And it really was revolutionary i think and of course it influenced how android designed their phones and so on so it's a, it sort of changed and of course it's interesting now that for a lot of people they don't use normal computers they just use a mobile phone like an iphone or an android phone uh, perhaps coupled with a tablet like an ipad as their day-to-day -day computing device so it has it's, it's in many ways it was as much a step from what computers were like before the macintosh what they were like after the Macintosh. So before the Macintosh, you had something like the Apple II of PCs at the time to the Macintosh, where you had a full sort of GUI. And we've looked at the Macintosh a couple of years ago when it was its 30th anniversary. So you sort of, I think it has created the sea change in the way we use computers. I don't think the vast majority of people are going to be using desktop or laptop computers. We will still have them. People will still use them for certain tasks, gaming perhaps. Um, although it's quite often consoles may get better at that, who knows, phones, whatever. Um, certainly development, probably want to do it on that, although I'm starting to get IDEs that are even better on that. So who knows? Maybe we'll just be talking to computers all the time, like in Star Trek. Um, one, one thing that I think is also quite important is it, it's obviously the interface it was, was revolutionary. You know, this idea of touch, people didn't use touch or didn't have big screens and things like this. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting, the sort of the multi-touch display was around you could see uh, i think it was jeff han had a video that came out early 2006 you had the microsoft surface back when microsoft surface meant a, an actual table surface that took up the size of the room turning friends on to new music will one day be done with the greatest of ease the idea was there but suddenly you went from large displays that sort of installation type things to something you fitted in your pocket and i think that was again how they did how they managed that and actually sort of realizing that that created an interface that was just sort of so usable was sort of um, fascinating. The other thing I found fascinating is thinking in terms of its family tree and obviously you've got the Apple sort of line feeding in it runs Mac OS X or a variant of it which comes from the Mac and comes from Next and so on 
but it was all designed around the ARM chip. So it's actually powered by an ARM chip, which is not unusual for a mobile phone or the iPod. Um, but of course, that comes from the Acorn line of things. So this is a, an old Acorn 3000, and this is the probably great, great, great grand, something or other, granddaddy of the processor in a modern mobile phone. This was the original ARM2 chip, which powered things like this or the original Archimedes. So I can sort of see lots of different lines of technology sort of merging to form this one device. And of course, well, I would say one device, but that was the one that sort of crystallized it. And from that, you've got the Android phones, you've got the Windows phone. I'm sure someone still uses them, um, and so on. And it really was different from having devices with keyboards or limited interactivity. You could actually view a web page on this, which you couldn't really do before, even on something like the iPad. It wasn't Apple's first stab at having some kind of organizer uh, in your pocket. Well, yeah, no, so Apple had in the 90s, they created the Newton. This is the original model. I didn't have one at the time. Um, I sort of picked one up later, which again, you could actually sort of use to take notes. It didn't have an internet connectivity, although it did have an IR port, so you could sort of stick your mobile phone if it had an IR port and get online that way. But the interesting thing about this um, is that you could actually write on it. And so in the sort of classic um, thing, let's create a new note, file this note in, uh, let's put it in business. This was uh, Sean trying it the other day. Um, print note, fax, beam, mail, delete. That's probably the best thing we want to do. My so, important note, you've just got Absolutely. To... So in the classic thing, we just want to sort of take a note. So in the classic um, one, we want to beat up Martin. And just like in the symptoms, it doesn't come out with the right answer. Yes. Take a memo on your Newton. Beat up Martin. So well, we actually got Martin this time rather than eat up Martha. So yeah, Apple had done this before. And actually this again was probably for its time a revolutionary device, but it just wasn't quite ready. The handwriting recognition wasn't quite good. And of course, it's still, it's file fax style um, rather than sort of slip it in your pocket and use it. So yeah, I think it's, everything came together and well, we, history's shown how it's changed everything running there. So yeah, and of course the cameras are not getting better and so we can even film computer file on a mobile phone now. So what have we got here? This is another Xilogix disc controller of some sort. You've got the control chips in the middle.